What's up guys, it's Josh back with another video and today I'm going to show you guys how to get shooting badges fast and easy in NBA 2K21 next gen. Make sure you guys watch the whole video because throughout the video I'm going to give you guys tips and show you guys different scenarios to make this shooting method as easy as possible. Also make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel and let's get right into it. As you guys can see I have all my shooting badges and the first thing you want to do before you get any of your badges, you guys want to go to options, go to settings and make sure you're on pro difficulty and 5 minute quarters. You can play on 12 minute quarters if you really want to but your my player will get tired faster and it'll make it harder to get your badges and also pro difficulty is easier than all the others all star superstar and hall of fame so you want to play on pro difficulty. And the last thing you guys want to do before you start is go to controller settings and then go to shot meter and either turn it off or to free throw only so you get an extra boost to your shot when you start a game the first thing you want to do is call a half court trap on defense to do this just click left on the d-pad and click r1 that'll call a half court trap and the thing this does is on defense it makes the people on your team double team the ball handler so that way one person will always be left open they'll put a shot up really fast and that way you'll get way more possessions on offense which means way more chances to get more shooting badges before we get into this method this method is actually really good because you can do it on the fast break you can do it in a half court offense not on the fast break and one last tip before I get into the method you guys want to put the fastest jump shot you can on so if you guys want a fast jump shot make sure to click a card in the top right or I can just explain the method for you guys you can wait till the end of the video and there should be an end screen with the jump shot that I used in these clips the first thing you guys need to understand about this method is that you can do this method on any build you don't need to be able to dribble all you have to do is just run along the three-point line and you'll get wide open so let me explain this to you guys so first you want to go to the top of the key then you want to give the ball to one of your teammates as you can see i'm giving it to dante divincenzo and then you just run along the wing and for some reason you'll get an animation where you spot up on the three-point line and the defender will be back so most of your shots will be between wide open and 25% contested and on this build I didn't have dead eye and as you can see I greened a 23% contested shot. And you don't necessarily have to be on the top of the key and then run towards the wing. You can run from the wing towards the top of the key. But I found that it's much easier to make wing shots and corner shots than top of the key shots. And with this method, as you can see right here, sometimes when you get the ball passed to you, you're not open. All you do is just run to the top of the key, run back to the wing. And as you can see, 26% covered. And I can green that with ease without dead eye. Another tip with this method is to have the person passing the ball to you be at the top of the key because they'll be much closer to you and it'll be a less chance that they throw a turnover. But right here, you can see Dante DiVincenzo passes to me and Giannis actually set a screen for me so that way this shot was 3% covered instead of 20% covered and obviously you can still green 20% covered shots but 3% covered shots are much easier to make and much easier to green. If you want your teammate to pass to you from the top of the key to lower the chance of it being a turnover all you have to do is have the ball in your hands point your left stick towards your teammate and then hold circle so they get a handoff animation. As you can see, Chris Middleton's right next to me. When he passes to me, there's nobody in the lane and I'm wide open and I can easily green the shot. Instead of running from the top of the key to one of the wings, you guys can start running towards one wing and then cut back towards the other wing. As you can see, Clint Capella can't keep up with me. He ends up getting stuck on John Collins and you can see how wide open I am and how easily I can green that shot. Obviously, after you give your teammate the ball, you want him to pass to you, but if he ends up passing to somebody else and you're still running along the three-point line, just call for the ball, and if they pass to you, you still have a chance to be wide open, even though it's less of a chance because it is a cross-court pass. But if you end up not being wide open, just go back to the top of the key and reset this method. And that's the good thing about this method. It doesn't take that much time, so if you end up doing it and not getting open, you still have a lot of time in the shot clock to do the method. As long as you guys know how to time your jump shot, you guys can do this method without any badges at all. And once you do get badges, you want to put them on catch and shoot and hot zone hunter. These are the two most important badges for this method. They've made this method a lot easier for me. Once you max out catch and shoot and hot zone hunter for your third shooting badge, you guys want to go for dead eye. And then for your next three shooting badges, you want to go for green machine. Then once you max that out, go for corner specialist. And once you max that out, go for volume shooter. As you can see in this clip right here, this shot looks like it's from the wing, but the wing shots that are really close to the corner actually count as corner shots. That's why corner specialist is so important for this method, because once you do run from the top of the key to the wing, a lot of the time it pulls you to the corner or to the edge of the wing, which also counts as a corner shot. Every time you're on the fast break and you don't have the ball in your hands, make sure to run to the top of the key and then start cutting along the three-point line to the left or right wing. As you can see, Giannis passes to me and Clint Capella cannot keep up with me. That shot's only 8% covered and I can easily green it. Even when you guys are not on the fast break, you guys can use this same exact method and get wide open from it. As you can see, I start cutting towards the right wing. Cody Zeller does not step up at all. That's wide open and an easy green. 
This method doesn't always work first try, as you can see Malik Monk is guarding me because Drew Holiday is trying to get to the corner. So I just give it back to Giannis, he actually ends up passing it back to me, but I can just give it right back to him. Start running along the three point line, as you can see I'm wide open. And you guys just saw how easy it is to reset if it doesn't work first try and how little time it takes. That's one of the best things about this method, the possessions go by super quickly, and that's what you want in a shooting badges method to get as many possessions as possible. Right here you can see I end up needing to reset, there are 17 seconds on the shot clock. I give the ball to Giannis, he actually gives it back to me, but I just give it right back to him. Start running along the three point line, and as you can see, I have enough space to shoot this shot. So I'm going to green the shot with 13 seconds left on the shot clock, which means it only took me 4 seconds to reset, and at the end of the day, these 4 seconds, they add up every single possession, and they help you get way more possessions. This next tip is actually really important, and even though I didn't do this, I suggest that you guys do. So one way to make more of your shots and to get shooting badges faster is to go to the Lakers, and I'll explain why. So if you guys haven't started a my career, you just want to start one up, go straight to the Lakers, skip high school, skip college, and if you guys are already in the NBA and not on the Lakers, that's okay. You just have to play 10 my career games, you can't sim them, and they'll actually go by really fast because you won't get that many minutes. And once you play 10 games, you can just request a trade to the Lakers, and the reason you want to go to the Lakers is because LeBron James has Hall of Fame Dimer, and with this method, you're going to be doing a lot of catch and shoot shots, and since he's the primary ball handler of that team, he'll be passing you the ball a lot, and this Hall of Fame Dimer, obviously you can make your shots without it that's what I did but it'll help a lot especially when you have no badges so make sure you guys go to the Lakers like I said before normally I go to the right wing when I do this method because I just feel like the jump shot will look the same every single time so if I were you I would just pick left wing or right wing to shoot all your shots at it's just a lot easier to shoot them all from the same spot I was still greening from the left wing but I was definitely shooting much better from the right wing and also, if you guys didn't know, top of the key shots, wing shots, and corner shots are all different speeds. So I would just pick one place to shoot all your shots from. Obviously, once you get more badges, especially Deadeye, you'll be able to green a lot more of your shots. Right here, you can see I actually greened a 31% contested shot, and that's not a good shot to take, but I actually ended up taking it and greening it. The way shooting badges work is actually by percentage. So if you shoot 10 for 10, you're going to get way more badge points than if you shoot 10 for 20. So make sure you aim to shoot at least 70% when you first start out and then as you get more badges i would aim to shoot at least 80 percent in most of these games i shot between 80 and 90 percent once you play about 15 to 20 micro games you'll be a starter and once you're a starter you guys can sim out at the half if you're up by 25 or more points so you're going to see that it says sim out a game with vc and you'll actually earn all your badge points and i actually do this every time just because towards the end of the game your my player starts to get tired and he'll start making less shots so if you're able to sim at the half just do it and then just start a new my career game if you take a look at this shot right here it looks like marcus smart can contest me but as you can see i go up with the shot he ends up not even getting a hand up until after i release the ball so as you guys play more and do this method more you'll be able to tell which shots are open versus which ones are not if they're in your face like face guarding you obviously it's not going to be open but if they give you a little bit of space it will be an open shot for this next shot when i catch the ball tristan thompson is kind of close to me but as you can see, I have enough space to shoot the shot, and that shot only ended up being 16% covered. If you guys have any questions about this method, make sure to comment down below and I'll answer it. But that's going to be it for the video. Make sure to drop a like if you haven't already. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. We're on the road to 8,000 subscribers, and I can't hit that if you guys don't subscribe. So make sure to subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching. It's Josh, and I'm out. Peace.